About five years ago, I lived downtown in a major city in the U.S. I've always been a night person, so I'd often find myself bored with my roommate, who was decidedly not a night person, went to sleep. To pass the time, I used to go for long walks and spend the time thinking. I spent four years like that, walking alone at night. Never once had I had a reason to feel afraid. I always used to joke with my roommate that even the drug dealers in the city were polite. But all of that changed. In just a few minutes, one evening. It was a Wednesday, somewhere between 1 or 2 in the morning, and I was walking near the police that patrolled park, quite a few ways from my apartment. It was a quiet night, even for a weeknight, with very little traffic and almost no one on foot. The park, as it was most nights, completely empty. I turned down a short side street in order to loop back to my apartment when I first noticed him. At the far end of the street on my side was the silhouette of a man, dancing. It was a strange dance, similar to a waltz, but he finished each box with an odd forward stride. I guess you could say he was dance walking, headed straight for me. Deciding he was probably drunk, I stepped as close as I could to the road to give him the majority of the sidewalk to pass me by. The closer he got, the more I realized how gracefully he was moving. He was very tall and lanky, wearing an old suit. He had danced closer still, until I looked at his face. His eyes were open and wild, head tilted back slightly, looking off at the sky. His mouth was formed by a painfully wide cartoon smile. Between his eyes and his smile, I decided to cross the street before he danced any closer. I took my eyes off him and across the empty street. As I reached the other side, I glanced back. And then, I stopped dead in my tracks. He stopped dancing and was standing with one foot in the street, perfectly parallel to me. He was facing me, but still looking skyward. Smile still wide. I was completely and utterly unnerved by this. I started walking again, but kept my eyes on the man. He didn't move. Once I'd put about a half a block between us, I turned away from him for a moment to watch the sidewalk in front of me. The street and the sidewalk ahead of me were completely empty. Still unnerved, I looked back to see where the strange man had been standing, to find him gone. Phew, for the briefest moments I felt relieved, until I noticed him. He had crossed the street and was now slightly crouched down. I couldn't tell for sure due to the distance of the shadows, but I was certain he was facing me. I had looked away from him for no more than ten seconds, so it was clear that he had moved fast. I was so shocked that I stood there for some time, staring at him, and then he started moving toward me again. He took giant, exaggerated, tiptoed steps as if he were a cartoon character sneaking up on someone except he was moving very, very quickly. I'd like to say at this point, I ran away and pulled out my pepper spray, or my cell phone, or anything at all, but I didn't. I just stood there, completely frozen, as he was smiling. He crept towards me, and then he stopped again, about a car length away from me, still smiling his smile, still looking to the sky. When I finally found my voice, I blurted out the first thing that came to my mind. What I meant to ask was, What do you want? In an angry, commanding tone. What did come out was a whimper. What? Regardless of whether or not humans can smell fear, they can certainly hear it. I heard it in my voice, and that only made me more afraid. But he didn't react to it at all. He just stood there smiling. And then after that, it felt like forever. He turned around very slowly and just started to dance walking away. Just like that. Not wanting to turn my back again, I just watched him go until he was far enough away to almost be out of sight. Then I realized something. He wasn't moving anymore, nor was he dancing. I watched in horror as the distant shape of the man grew larger and larger. He was coming back my way, and this time he was running. I ran too. 
I ran until I was off the side of the road and back into a better sparse of traffic. Looking behind me then, he was nowhere to be found. Oh my god. Whew. The rest of the way home, I kept glancing over my shoulder, always expecting to see his stupid smile. But he was never there. I lived in that city for another six months after that night, and I never went out for another walk. There was something about his face that always haunted me. He didn't look drunk. He didn't look high. He looked completely and utterly insane. And that's a very, very scary thing to see and endure. <laughs>